It's 2.30 in the morning, and I'm not sleeping, but I should. I'm not sleeping because my sheets are in the dryer, and I do not like sleeping on wet sheets. I wouldn't imagine many people would. Anyway, a user by the name of KDaniels19 sent me a message asking me several questions, and hell, I figure while I'm waiting for my sheets to dry, I might as well answer them in video format. What would Kalen do? Question mark. These are pretty abstract questions, and I hope that you contain more of your thoughts and not just answers in the realm of what I've asked. Maybe you could include what atheists think corporately and what you think individually. I would really like solid answers and words to these questions, and please explain your answers if needed. Thanks so much! Exclamation mark. You speak often about why you left other ways of thinking slash teaching. So I wonder, is there anything that negates or could ever deter your commitment or make you feel any doubt about this atheism movement? Movement, huh? Not sure I like the sound of that. I think that might be a misunderstanding on your part. Anyway, uh... Is there anything that negates... Currently? No. If there was anything that, that negated it, I would seriously consider it. Or could ever deter your commitment to atheism. While well, I worked for Moses, and if we are to take the story at face value, a burning bush that is not consumed by the fire which burns it, speaking with the voice of God, seemed to convince Moses. I'd start there. If someone was wanting to convert, yes, that is in quotation marks, convert to atheism, what advice would you offer them? Think it through. Not only think it here, but you'll probably feel it here as well. Uh, you can rationalize all you want, but when it comes down to it, we are emotional creatures. And in order to be really convinced of a proposition, we have to feel it that it is right. Uh, and I point here because, at least as far as I'm concerned, um, usually emotional responses create feelings in the chest area for whatever physiological reason that is, tightening of blood vessels or changing in the heart, whatever it is, usually feel it in here. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all in your own head and um, just think it through. If you're seriously considering it, you're probably already there and just emotionally attached to older ideas. So all of it, just it's internal mental process. Just work it through yourself and you'll come to an acceptable conclusion. Now, many atheists believe in no concept of hell, heaven, nirvana. Nirvana is a Buddhist concept, if I'm not mistaken. Buddhism does not have any deities. Uh, technically, it's, it would be an atheistic religion. But I think that you're getting it when you say atheist. You mean uh, like naturalist or skeptic, somebody without any uh, any belief in anything supernatural. I guess nirvana would be supernatural. Reincarnation, etc. So I wonder, one, what do you believe in as an afterlife? And if it is just we turn into energy, or we stay in the ground, or nothing happens, etc. Why not think of an afterlife that offers peace, fulfillment, instant gratification, all-day buffets, whatever meets your fancy? A heavenly-like place where all of your desires come true. If you understand how computers work, and I think most people have the basic concept of what's going on internally in the computer, right? You've got hardware, and while it's on, there's electricity flowing through it and all of these different organized patterns depending on which physical piece is using what, uh, doing what operation. If you cut the power, hard drive is still there, the RAM's still there, all the cables are still there, there's no electricity flowing through the system. So it, for all intents and purposes, it's dead. 
it is a lifeless body I think at least by analogy the same thing happens with us you shut off the processes in the brain it still exists but all the life has gone out of it it's not alive anymore and I think that's what death is just pull the plug done as far as afterlife I don't see room for an afterlife why not think a nice thing about oh heaven because it's there's no evidence to believe that that's the case so why try to convince yourself of something that's not true why fool yourself I mean I, I wouldn't try to fool myself of anything I don't think anybody should I don't think that's healthy um, if there is such a place as an afterlife must there be a ruler no if there was a logically conceptually honest and sound God who would would you accept him well I assume by the things that you listed that you do you mean he's objectively verifiable like you can point to him and say oh boom there he is and you can have enough certainty that any rational reasonable person would have to accept that that entity exists I think that's what you're trying to say well in that case then I would have to accept that he exists otherwise I'd be fooling myself would you accept the tenets he would want you to follow you didn't say in your description that this God was necessarily good. He could be an evil God. If he was evil, I don't think I would accept the, the tenets that he would want me to follow. If he was good, I might. Probably would, I would say. And what you said, there's no tie between morality and this God, as far as I can tell. So, um, I would have to use my own morality to determine if I would follow anything that he said, um, from where you're coming from, I think you'd, you'd say, like, oh yeah, this is a good God and he wants to do good things. I probably would not have a problem with any of the tenets that he would put forth. Now, if there were such a thing as gods, what would they look like to you? Assuming they could look like anything they wanted, there's a history in human religions to have them be anthropomorphic, both physically and personality. The the Greeks and then the Romans took from the Greeks and older still the Egyptian gods if you go uh, to the Central America uh, the Aztecs and the Olmecs their gods were some of them took animal forms and others were more more anthropomorphic you'd probably if gods existed you would probably get the whole gambit of of that of what they lo looked like uh, would you create a religion knowing that it's BS absolutely not I couldn't, I couldn't in good, good conscience create a, a system built upon lies. Absolutely not, I couldn't do that. If you could create a religion, what would its principles and tenets be? I would not. How do you explain suffering? Uh, suffering happens because we're animals and nature doesn't care about us. Evil. Evil is a concept of that we've invented to deal with things like suffering. Uh, good. Good is a concept that we've invented, which is the opposite of evil. Uh, compassion. Compa human morality is actually built on compassion. If there is a biological component to this, we have structures in our brains called mirror neurons. They've done pretty extensive tests on this. Uh, if, say if you're, you're watching a video of uh, somebody like crashing their bike, and you can see it, it actually invokes a physical response in your brain mirroring real pain that you would feel. So th this is the basis of empathy. You can feel somebody else's pain. Um, and compassion would just derive from that. We would want to help someone avoid pain almost in a selfish way, but it's probably developed more as a a way for individuals to work in groups better than as a means for uh, like primitive self-survival. Uh, do things like suffering, evil, good, compassion need to be explained? Uh, just in the context that they're appropriate, like why people think things the way they do. Um, this is probably stuff like this probably belongs within sociology and not someplace else like evil and good don't have any broader like transcendental universal quality to them they'd be specific to humanity
Uh, and that's it. Thanks. Happy answering. Great. Okay, good. I'm done.